بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد Dear viewers السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Once again it's an honor to be amongst you discussing the holy verses of the Quran and the narrations of Ahlul Bayt alayhim as-salam asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the blessing of the Quran and by the blessings of the narrations of Ahlul Bayt alayhim as-salam and us being next to the shrines of Abu Abdullah al Hussein and Abul Fadl Abbas alayhim as-salam to bless us more in order to be able to apply the teachings of the Holy Quran into our lives and insha'Allah get closer and closer to him. We are discussing Surah Al-Hamd. We have reached to the verse, You alone do we worship and you alone do we turn for help. We discussed in the previous episode, We talked about the ibadah, worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it means also to obey him and why Rasulullah was sent. In continuation, when we get to Iyaka Nasta'in, we see a beautiful narration by Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, where he states, Qala Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah has stated, Qulu, say, Iyaka Nasta'in, you alone do we turn for help, for what we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone for help, in what? Ala ta'atika, in of showing obedience to him and obeying his orders and also in worshipping him so we need Allah's aid first and foremost for us to obey him and for us to worship him it's a very important that we keep this in mind that this is the very important concept that we are seeking aid in worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're seeking aid in obeying his teachings. And also, so we turn to you Allah alone for help to be able to obey and obey you and to worship you Allah and to eliminate the evil of your enemy and to return their deceit. So every day we see the importance of reading and reciting Surah Al-Hamd on a daily basis, minimum 10 times, if we just do our wajibat prayers, how important it is for us to think of these meanings and what we are truly asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, why it is mandatory, why it is obligatory for us to recite Surah Al-Hamd if it's not because of Surah Al-Hamd, our Salah is not accepted. So Surah Al-Hamd is mandatory. The second Surah, we can recite whatever Surah we decide. Either we can go with the smallest chapter, Surah Al-Kawthar, or we can go with the biggest and the longest chapter, Surah Al-Baqarah. That would be the second chapter. But the first Surah, Surah Al-Hamd is mandatory. So when we're reading, some people might have asked me that what can we do so we can focus more during our Salah. One of the suggestions, is to think of the meanings of what you are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Think of the meanings of the things that you are saying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh Allah, help me, aid me. I am, to, I am coming to you alone for help, for aid. I need your assistance, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In what? In obeying you and also in worshipping you and also to eliminate the evil of your enemy against me and to return their deceit because the enemy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and us they are attacking us on a daily basis on hourly basis on minute basis we've been attacked we've been attacked from as shaitan swore to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I will come from the right and left and the back and the front I will try my best to not let them stay firm on your path on the path to you the path of guidance we need in our life more. So when we say as we have mentioned within the previous episode, that is not only verbally saying no, truly we believe that if it's not, if it's not because of Allah's aid and assistance, we cannot be on the right path. We cannot be a good believer. Even as we said within the previous episode, uh, Rasulullah has taught us to say, 
Well, Allah, do not, do not leave me to myself even for a glance of an eye. Ilahi, oh Allah, don't leave me alone to myself. So, oh Allah, I'm seeking aid from you. I'm coming back to you again in the morning two times. Dhuhr and Asr four times. Maghrib and Asha again four times. So we keep repeating and repeating. Why? Because we need his aid. This has to become part of belief that we, we say it. A lot of people pray, but do we truly believe that we are in need of Allah's help? All the time, we are in need of his help. From every second of our life, we think and consider we are in need of his aid and assistance. Turning to Allah for aid in financial, spirituality, worldly affairs, religious affairs, social issues, everywhere. First, we have to say, okay, Allah, how can I need help, oh Allah? And we have to truly believe that He can help us and He can open an avenue, open a gate for us when we see all the doors are closed. This is called yaqeen, certainty, iman. When I believe that Allah, as soon as He intervenes and he, when He intervenes, all the closed door will be open to me. But it's the time that He's going to do it. And it is to my maslaha, to my benefit when He does it. But unfortunately, some people, their patience are very, very low. The level of their patience is very, very low. So as soon as some, they face some difficulties or some challenges, they start complaining, Oh Allah, why is this? Dua and supplication and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's very important that Allah, I need your help again in obeying you and worshipping you and also to return, to eliminate the evil of your enemy and to return their deceit. So first, First, we have to show that we are truly worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After this showing of worship, Asta'in comes that, oh Allah, I'm in need of your help. I'm worshipping you and I need your help in this worship and also to be able to fight against my inner Satan and outer Satan and to be able to defeat them and to get closer to you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even though worshipping, it's us, we saying, we're doing it. We have the free will. Iyaka na'abudu. We do, but still, it, even within these ibadah, within these acts of worships, we are in need of your help, O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa iyyaka nasta'een. And it's, not, it's between free will and predestination. Free will that we are worshipping. We are acting upon the worships that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed for us. But at the same time, we should remember that if it wasn't because of Allah's aid and assistance, we wouldn't be able to worship Him. So it's a both way, not completely free will and not completely predestined. No, we do some part and we need Allah's help. We are in need of His help in order to be worshiping Him. If I see I have a problem within my salah, and I just keep saying salah, salah, I say, come, Allahu Akbar. I pray my prayer, suddenly I see myself, Assalamu alayna wa ala abadillah salihin, Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. I finish salah, I don't know what I have read. Well, let me ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh Allah, I need your help that during my worship, during the acts of worship that I'm going through, I'm in need of your help so I can be patient, I can pay attention to what I'm reciting, and I can get closer to you, oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, one criticism that we, the followers of Ahlul Bayt get. We have people who criticize us that say, okay, see, within the Holy Quran, the first chapter, Allah has taught us to say, You alone do we worship and you alone do we turn for help. Then how comes that you guys go to, to your belief to Ahlul Bayt to Muhammad and Ali Muhammad and ask for help. Don't you have to ask help directly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Hasn't the Quran taught you to only ask from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you alone do we worship and you alone we come back for help? We get this criticism. And our youth and us adults, all of us, we are in need of being able to answer these questions, these misconceptions, these doubts that comes and our youth are getting these misconceptions and doubts. They should be able to answer it. So, very good question. 
But before answering, I'm going to give you a concept. And it's very important that it becomes a very good action plan. It is very important. Anyone who brings us a verse of the Holy Quran and wants to argue against us based on this holy verse, that you believe in so and so, and look, the Quran said so and so. Or you are going against the teaching of the Quran because this verse says so and so. Well, we have to be very, very careful. The first answer we have to give them, have you read other verses of the Holy Quran? Have you read the previous chapters? Have you read the chapters before that? Have you read all the verses within the same chapters? Have you read Quran completely and you can see all the verses and you are familiar with all the verses or you just bring one verse out of context and you haven't read what is before, what is after, other chapters? Has it been other verses that discuss and explains these verses or not? That's very important for us to keep in mind. But unfortunately, as soon as we are uh, confronted with a misconception and a doubt due to the lack of knowledge, due to not understanding and, have not re and we have not read the Quran from the beginning to the end and not being familiar with the verses of the Holy Quran, they, make a, they bring a verse of Quran and they bring some quote-unquote rational reasoning and we start doubting our faith, doubting our religion. Oh, how can we go to Ahlul Bayt when we come, inshallah, I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the blessing of Quran and Imam Hussein to grant you visitation of the shrine of Imam Hussein as soon as possible. Well, we come to Imam Hussein we ask for our need. We go to Abu al-Fadha Abbas alayhi salam, Bab al-Hawa'aj, the gate of granting people's needs. We go to him, we go to Najaf al-Ashraf, to Amir al-Mu'mineen, Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam, Kazamain, Samar Ram, Mashhad, and we go to Ahl al-Bayt alayhi salam, seeking aid, asking our needs from that, that oh, Ahl al-Bayt, give us, grant us our needs. We have ill people, we have financial problem, we have family problem, we have social issues, and so on and so forth, with all the difficulties that people come to these shrines and they go back and their needs have been granted. So, legit question. We say, the beginning, You alone, O oh Allah, we turn for help. So the question is again, when we say you alone, we come means no one else. That is in chapter one, okay? We tell the, we tell the person who's asking us a question. Have you read chapter two? Verse 153, Surah Al-Baqarah, basically the next chapter, verse Ayah 153. Same Allah who has taught us in the first chapter to say, The same God in the second chapter has taught us, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, O you who have believed, Asta'inu bi sabr wa salat inna Allah ma'as sabirin. O you who have believed, Seek assistance, seek aid, seek help. Through what? Through patience and prayer. Surely Allah is with the patient. So, Oh Allah, I come to you alone and I seek aid from you. He taught us to say this. But the same Allah, same God, He tells us, seek aid. O oh, who you have believed, seek aid and assistance from what? from patient and prayer. Sabr. How many hours and hours and hours of discussions we have to give and we have to read about sabr and patient. Which unfortunately, we see some members of the community, some members of the society, as soon as they face some difficulties, some challenges, they, don't, they are not patient. And they want their problems to be resolved within the next, next minute or two or hour or day maximum they can prolong their patience. Or you have believed, seek aid. Allah is ordering us. When you face the difficulties, when you face a challenge, be patient. That's number the first element. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us to seek aid from something that him, other than him. Allah, patient. He says seek aid from patient and seek aid from prayers. Salah, wajibat. That becomes a good second action plan. Anytime that we are facing difficulties and challenges within our life, be it whatever challenge that we are facing, let us start doing wudu and sitting on our sajjada, reading a couple of pages of Quran and praying two rak'ah salat al-hajj. 
in our qunut, we can mention in whether, whatever language that we want to speak. We can talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our qunut. Oh Allah, I have this problem, I have this difficulty, I have this challenge. Oh Allah, I'm trying to pray my prayers on time. I need your help to grant me. So these are the mustahabbat. These are extras. These are things that by us doing it, we are following the teachings of Quran, following the teachings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where he said, astainu bis sabri wa salat. When you face difficulties, seek aid and assistance from patient and prayer. So on a daily basis, so number one, <clears throat> Allah has told us to seek aid from other things. Number one. Number two, on a daily basis, we seek help, aid, and assistance from one another. Wife from husband, husband from wife. An individual from the doctor, when we go to the doctor, we are in need of doctor's aid and assistance and help. Parents from kids, kids from parents, and so on and so forth. On a daily basis, we are in need of each other's help. But by us going to the doctor, are we saying that this is the doctor who he is by himself? He is curing me and Allah doesn't have any intervention in this. Allah has nothing to do with this cure. When we ask someone's aid and assistance, are we only asking from them or not? And what is the relationship between us asking from the people and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Inshallah, we will answer it in the next episode, inshallah. We will conclude our episode and our lecture, inshallah, by asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most important dua, and that is to for Allah to hasten the appearance of our beloved Imam Imam Mahdi Ajalallah Ta'ala Faraj al-Sharif us reading Dua al-Faraj Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Allahumma kun li waliyika al-Hujjat ibn al-Hasan Salawatuka alayhi wa ala abaih Fi hadhah al-Sa'ata wa fi kulli sa'ah Waliyan wa hafidha wa qa'idan wa nasara wa dalilan wa ayna Hatta tuskinahu ardaka taw'a Wa tumatta'ahu fiha tawila Barahmatika ya arham ar-Rahameen Thank mm -hmm. you.